that kind is kind of based of my PhD that I did at um, Uplant about three years ago. But it's also something that has grown from it, so it's a little bit of both. And um, I should explain. Um, it's I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure if I should talk about just iron or axis, and I decided, since my PhD was on axis, I'll, I'll talk more about axis than iron, but you'll see where iron comes in in a minute. So, um, yeah, my, um, my PhD was basically on socketed axis, and any prehistorian, if you tell them I'm working on um, socketed axis, they'll go, ooh. You're a Bronze Age archaeologist, archaeologist, surely, late Bronze Age person. And when I say, no, actually, I do early Iron Age um, socketed axes, most people will go, no. <laughs> because socketed axes surely are late Bronze Age and not early Iron Age. And to be fair, that is probably the single biggest issue I dealt with throughout my entire research. Um, the whole problem of what the hell am I looking at? So I, um, I was looking at socketed axis, but I felt very drawn into the Iron Age. I felt I was, I, was, I was not a late Bronze Age person, but I was doing something different and it should be the Iron Age. But Iron Age people told me, no, because there's no socketed axis in the early Iron Age, so therefore you are a late Bronze Age person. And late Bronze, late Bronze Age people would tell me, well, no, your axes are different, so you're really an early Iron Age person. So I, I sort of suffered from split personality for a very long time. Whenever I went to conferences and um, talked about what I was looking at, um, I, never quite, I was never quite sure how to, how to title my talks. And even, um, I think I must have driven my supervisor mad um, because he kept changing, like I, I, would, I would put in my PhD, the late Bronze Age stroke, early Iron Age transitional socketed axis of Britain, and he goes, no, 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 no. This just this, this doesn't make any sense. Go look at them. Come to a, a conclusion because there will be one, and then you know go talk about it. And um, so I went and looked at about fourteen hundred socketed axes, which were um, oh, I'll go, go into that in a minute, which were different from other socketed axes, and you'll, you'll see what that means in a minute. Basically, um, I realised that what I was looking at wasn't quite as easy and straightforward and simplistic as maybe it looked, it looked to be on the outset, because um, Iron, so it's, it's, uh, basically, if you think of Bronze Age and Iron Age, you think, oh, well, in the, in the Bronze Age, people were using bronze, and in the Iron Age, people were using iron. That's very straightforward and easy, but obviously, it doesn't quite work like that. Stone was used throughout, and yes, they used bronze in the Bronze Age, but it, they didn't stop using bronze for stuff in the Iron Age, they just used it for different things. And when iron came in, there was a short period where it seems like iron was used to, it was such a novel, exciting new material, for a very, very short period of time, virtually everything got copied. And I think that is the, um, that's the period I was studying. It wasn't very long, um, but we find exciting things like socket axes and iron, which really don't work. And our rubbish little little things, if you look at them now, it's like they're, they, they, they couldn't really work. They also tried to make brooches and pins from iron, which is as horrible as it sounds. They may have been nice for a little while, but in the long run, um, jewelry made from iron it, well, it didn't take off, as we all know. They, like, later on in the Iron Age, um, bronze was really the token metal for um, buckles and, um, and, and um, brooches and, and that sort of thing, and pins. So I thought, sort of right, it needs, there needs to be a better, I need, looking at the material culture, there needs to be a better way to maybe describe the transition or the, um, the, the socketed axis of the earliest Iron Age, because um, my main problem, and the main problem that other archaeologists seem to have with me, is that when I said, well, I'm an early Iron Age archaeologist, um, people studying and settlements said, no, you're not, because we study settlements and hill forts are early Iron Age. There's no late Bronze Age hordes or no hordes of the kind that you're studying um, that is they are contemporary with hill forts. So I need, I need to sort of 
uh, go back to square one and, and try to look at the transition from a from a different angle. And I think this is what I found. I found that it's it's easy to say I'm studying a transition period when really the transition period for all the strands of life, deposition practices, burials, settlements, the transition from say Bronze to Iron Age, or it doesn't have to be that long, it can be early to Middle Bronze Age or Middle to Late Bronze Age or whatever, all the different strands that are a human being's life, um, the transition might be in a slightly different place. So for settlements, it might be slightly different than for, for burials and for burials, it might be slightly different to what, what metal, metal was used primarily. So looking at um, an axis, what I found, or metal work health in general, I found that the um, the culture of um, or the, um, the, the the position of metal work, as we all know, was um, um, was very very common in the late Bronze Age, especially in East Anglia and in um, in Kent. And you get these these metal work holds, some of which are huge. Um, it's basically assemblages like this with um, broken up metal work, socketed axes, swords, um, spearheads, ornaments, um, all sorts of things. And most of them are broken up. Sometimes you get a um, complete um, complete axes, they're a bit battered and bashed. Sometimes you even get bits of moulds. But um, the, the, the composition of all of these hordes is quite similar. You get smaller and bigger ones, and some hordes are slightly different, but generally they are all quite similar. And they all seem to um, cluster in East Anglia, South East Anglia, Suffolk and Essex, and in Kent. Now, early on, what I would call earliest Iron Age hordes look very similar, but are actually quite, di are quite different. They are different compositions. People, I felt that people thought differently composing those hordes and, and depositing them in, in the ground. So for example, we get um, hordes like this one from Tower Hill in Oxfordshire, and this one's Myler in Cornwall. And you can see all these axes are complete. Most of them were unused um, they, were, they were never used. Some of the um, axes still had um, a clay core inside, so they were never they, they were never used. They didn't really have. They, in some ways, they reached the end of their lives, but it isn't. It wasn't the end of their lives as we knew it. It's not like they they were made and used, and then they couldn't be used anymore, and they were deposited. And the same with the with the, um, the hold from um, from Oxfordshire from from uh, Tower Hill. Again, these axes were. They were brought, they were, they were reshaped up to a point, but they were never used to chop down anything or to, to trim anything. Um, on the other hand, we get exciting parts like this. This is the hoard from the Vale of Warden. It's very similar to the big, bigger um, Salisbury hoard. It's um, a multi-period hoard, and you find these exciting assemblages where you don't just get lots of what we think contemporary late Bronze Age metalwork. You get um, some, you get, um, you get late Bronze Age um, swords, you get middle Bronze Age pole staves, you get early Iron Age stuff, you get um, really, really quite late, um, not bracelet fragments, there's a couple in that part, there's a couple of early Bronze Age flat axes as well. It's basically a, an assemblage that was somehow collected or curated for a while, and it now includes objects that, some of which date, um, they, they were about 2,000 years old by the time it was they were they were deposited. So the, the reason for deposition of this seems very very different to um, the the reasons for deposition of um, these late Bronze Age hordes. So I felt that even that just with these hordes with the socketed axis in them, you, we, we could see a difference, like a, a transition from one one type of deposition and to another. So um, my thesis objectives at the time were. Um, what are these socketed axes used for? Is it really as straightforward as we understood them to be? Are they, are they just axes? Like if you, if you go to a shop today and buy an axe, you basically, you, you go and buy it probably to chop down something or to, to trim something or to just basically, it's basically a woodworking tool. However, um, from the early Iron Age holds that I looked at, I felt axes had moved away from that. They weren't really, it wasn't really that wasn't really like their main um, um, their main use anymore. So I looked into um, into different uses, like for example, could they be used as weapons, as ingots for display, possibly for pendants. Some of them are tiny. So um, 
Yeah, I'm not going to, to bore you with many um, many of my uh, my diagrams, but it's just it's just to to show that in the early Iron Age you don't get very many pots anymore with um, lots of artifacts. Many of them um, are just just axes. Axes axe seem to be hoard more than any, anything else. Um, just to prove that iron does um, does play a role, um, I do get in. Like I said, the, the axes that I looked at were contemporary with the very, very first iron objects, like um, an iron sword, a spearhead, and we see this is an iron socketed sickle painstakingly made, it's a, a perfect copy of these late, um, late Bronze Age ones. Then this is the hall from um, Hinden in Wiltshire, and it's, um, it's in, it included these tiny little um, very lightweight axes, which and they could have, you could have never used them for, for chopping down anything or trimming anything. They were far too thin, far too fragile. But um, this is how they came out of the ground. But they actually cleaned one of them. And if you if you clean it, um, you can see the thing doesn't look very bronze at all. In fact, it looks silver. It looks like iron. And um, I, I wonder. I did, I did think, well, and it was um, deposited with um, a really crumbly, sad-looking iron spearhead, and this is what's left of the sickle. They're really not, iron really doesn't preserve well at all in the ground, so we don't know how many iron bits maybe from other hordes um, we, we never found. But um, this kind of, it, it kind of made me think, well, they weren't really hoarding iron axes, but what if they, they managed to give these um, bronze axes an iron look to them? And they were then deposited with other iron artifacts. Um, yeah, I was. I did look at, at loads of axes, trying to um, to basically find out about different um, different types that were possibly used for for um, for different things. If you look at them, um, if you look at uh, this is a comparison of late Bronze Age axes, which is all of these here, and then Iron Age axes, or early Iron Age axes, which are over here. So you can see there is a very um, there's, a, uh, there's a very distinct difference between the weight. These are much lighter, they're much smaller, whilst the early Iron Age ones are um, much bigger, much thicker, much, um, much heavier. Um, you, they are moving away from, it seems, one interpretation of one single use for a socketed axe, but finding um, different uses um, for them. Yeah, so basically we end up at two ends of a, of a spectrum and none of these axes seem to, their primary use was not woodworking. We have these, these really small, pointless axes with this silvery sheen, most of them from um, Wiltshire around the Salisbury area and from, Nor from Norfolk on the, um, in East Anglia. And then we've got these really big, heavy axes. Again, most of them, some of them were sharpened and you could have used them for for something, I'll get into that in a minute, but most of them had this, I mean, if you ever handled an axe, this is like, it's really unwieldy, it's like it's very, very long and slender with a, with a very short, very, um, not very broad cutting edge, it's, it's really, trying to chop down anything with that is very, it's very difficult, it's more, it's more like, um, it looks more like a chisel, but the size isn't quite right, it's just not what you would expect a good woodworking tool would um, work like. So it's just a yeah. So um, and this is how they were uh, how they were deposited. You can see these ones. They were never they were never used for anything. They were they were the, the blades were hammered slightly. You can see it here. But you can see these ones were sharpened, but these ones weren't sharpened at all. They were just deposited basically in what we call S cast condition. They were never used for anything. Um, what kind of boy you suppose? But um, so I also looked at the distribution of these. Axes which I felt were slightly different, and I um, come. This is basically um, the distribution of all the different types that I looked at, and you can see there's a concentration here in Wessex, and then there's a concentration here in North East Anglia and in the, um, in the in the London area. And if we compare that to um, late Bronze Age ports, you can see that late Bronze Age ports are all around here. There's a, like the little black dots. And you can see not only um, has the use of socket axis changed, but also the foci of work of um, nah, of um, where the main deposition of um, those axes took place. Here, 
and there, and then we've got a couple of outliers up here, and then we've got one up here at the top somewhere. It's so, even though, um, even though it's not, some of these hearts do not include, uh, some, of, some of them do include iron, but other stone, you can still see that as a, as a transi transition into the iron, into the iron age, and I feel, I felt quite certain when after I su submitted my thesis, yes, I was, I was looking at, at a totally different phenomenon. It is the earliest, well, what's now called the earliest Iron Age, I should say, not the early Iron Age, because I haven't quite convinced some of the hardline settlement people yet. But, um, well, we'll see how that goes. Um, it's, um, it, is, it is a phenomenon that, that most of all you can, you can see in Wessex um, and in Cornwall as well. And, all the areas where you get these typical late Bronze Age hordes are completely, there's like nothing there. Kent, it, it, it normally it like drowns in late Bronze Age hordes. Same with um, Essex and Suffolk, and you, don't, you hardly get any. Um, yeah, also, um, I did look very briefly at um, this ceramic types, um, very, um, very kind of ceramic styles, and again, you can maybe see a little bit, they're all early Iron Age, and you can see that um, the um, groups of, of, of hordes and groups of axes actually do um, match some of the ceramic style. So I feel with my axes, even though they're socketed and even though they're made from bronze, most of them, we are still in the earliest Iron Age rather than in a late Bronze Age, even though people try and pull me, pull me back. Um, yeah, and just how much have I got left? Like a minute or something? How, how long have you got left? Kind of, I think about five slides. It's just, it's just, a, I'm just trying to... Uh, two more. Two yeah, more. I'm just, I'm just, it's just to show really that um, how I think about how the use of axes changed. I looked into how um, in the later medieval, in the early medieval, later medieval period, axes were often used um, um, as weapons. And I think some of the ones that I looked at could have quite and quite convincingly used for building schools, for example, because they were quite heavy, they were very sharp, the blades are very um, wide and crescent shaped. There's no reason to think that it couldn't have been. Also, um, in the Iron Age, we get these really, these tiny, tiny socketed axes. And even though no, no, I've only got one of those in one of my hordes, it's, um, yeah, this is the one, this is from the Vale of Water. It's a tiny axe and it's got the loop on the other side. This could have possibly been worn as a as a pendant, so it's like a token axe. Obviously, it's completely pointless for, for anything else. You couldn't could chop anything with it. And this is mine. I'm not actually wearing it today, but I've got like an axe pendant. Um, yeah, this is just to show how the, um, the color of this axe is very similar to this. These are more than replicas, but that color is very similar to what they were trying to achieve. Oh, yeah, this is just like, thank you to everybody who helped. Thank you. Thank you.